reproductive anatomy of the cow. In order to understand the proper insemination technique, it is very important to know the female reproductive tract. External genitals, vulva, clitoris, and vestibular glands. Vagina. It is a cavity of strong muscular tissue that connects the vulva with the cervix. At natural service, it receives the penis of the male. Uterus, also known as the womb. It offers shelter to the fetus until the calving moment. Cervix. It is located between the vagina and the body of the uterus. It is made up of fibrous tissue, which is dense and hard to palpation. The inner side presents folds with a spiral form and it is approximately two to five inches in length and two inches in diameter. Body of the uterus. Located anterior to the cervix, this structure is the place where the semen should be deposited. Target site. It is made up of soft tissue and it is usually one inch long. Uterine horns. Each one is approximately from 8 to 16 inches in length and they are connected to their respective oviducts. Oviducts. These tubes connect the ovaries with the uterine horns. They provide the site of encounter, fertilization, between the ovum and the sperm. Ovaries. They are approximately one and a half inches in length one inch in width and one half inch in thickness and their main function is to produce eggs and to secrete hormones, estrogen and progesterone. The estrus cycle in dairy cattle is between 18 and 24 days with an average of 21 days. Estrus is the period 12 to 18 hours in which the cow is receptive to the bull. Metestrus, this stage lasts four days and begins after ovulation with the formation of a CL or corpus luteum. Diestrus. This phase, 12 to 13 days, is controlled by progesterone. Proestrus, four to five days. After the regression of the CL, causing the growth of a dominant follicle necessary for the next behavioral estrus and proestrus ovulation. Visual signs. Superior estrus detection is the cornerstone of a successful reproductive program. Estrus detection requires skill, experience, and consistency. The cost of missed heats per cow could range from $3.50 to $5 per day and will affect your herd profitability. What do cows do when they are in heat? Stand to be mounted, also known as standing heat. This is the classic sign of estrus. Females and estrus group together and mount each other. The animal on the bottom is in heat. It is very common for both animals to be in heat. Pace corrals and lines head to tail. Tail chalking instruction. The chalk should be managed according to retention of the chalk in relation to the season. Tail chalk should be positioned starting two inches behind the hip bones to the tip of the tail head in a three quarter inch wide stripe. Each cow should receive one stripe of chalk per day. Improper chalking will lead to false positives 
and missed keys. Signs of estrus, tail chalk rubbed off, mucus, ruffled hair, vulva swollen, mucus present on tail or on the rear flanks. Inside of the vulva is red and slippery. Records indicate she is in a normal heat cycle. All of the above signs are equally important, however none is foolproof. For this reason, we investigate further to find more than one sign of estrus. Are at least three of the above five signs present? Yes? Then breed with confidence. No? Then palpate for mucus. Is mucus present? Yes? Breed with confidence. No? Do not breed. Since the window of opportunity of cows in heat is very narrow, and 70% of cows come into heat unnoticed. Other tools like OBSYNC, 10-day co-sync, heat sync, pre-sync, re-sync, prostaglandin programs, cedar programs, MGA programs, all can deliver results and at the same time fit into your repro workflow better. Efficient heat detection will ensure you'll increase your pregnancy rates and cash flow. Tools of the trade. Now we will show the equipment needed for the artificial insemination process. Storage tank, AI gun, disposable plastic gloves, straw cutter or scissors, tweezers, lubricant, paper towels, semen thawing unit with thermometer, disposable plastic sheets, gun warmer, Once you are sure that the cow to be bred is not pregnant and is in heat, check the identification number and the breeding records. For appropriate semen handling and to facilitate the AI gun preparation, it is advisable to keep the AI kit close to the storage tank and proceed as follows. Prepare the thaw unit, making sure that the thaw water is clean and between 94 and 98 degrees Fahrenheit. With the tweezers, remove the straw from the storage tank and place it immediately, taking no more than five seconds, in the thaw bath for at least 30 to 40 seconds. Do not thaw more than three straws at a time. Then put the canister back inside the tank, keeping it at all times below the frost line. If for some reason it is difficult to locate or remove the straw from the tank, Put the canister back and wait 15 seconds before trying it again. Once the straw has been removed, make sure to put back the lid of the tank and close it correctly. Many breeders lose canes of semen to the bottom of the tank because they do not handle the canister and the cane of semen correctly. While thawing the straw, pre-warm the AI gun by rubbing it with a paper towel and keeping it inside coveralls or shirt or place it inside the gun warmer. With the tweezers, remove the straw from the thaw box and place it into a folded paper towel. Completely dry the semen straw because water is lethal to sperm cells. Always protect semen from exposure to sunlight and from cold shock. Never return a thawed or partially thawed straw back into the tank. Using the straw cutter or scissors, cut the semen straw at the crimped end just below the seal. Then place the straw in the gun and the sheath over the gun and straw, tightly securing it with a twisting motion to avoid the leakage of sperm into the plastic sheath during the process of semen deposition. 
Advance semen to fill any airspace in the straw. Then place it inside the gun warmer and transport it to the breeding area. Put on a shoulder length disposable plastic glove. Lubricate it and stand sideways behind the cow. Form a cone with your fingers and gently insert the hand through the anal opening. Once the hand is fully in the rectum, open fingers from the cone position and remove the fecal matter, if needed, by cupping the hand and pulling it out without taking your hand out. Avoid excessive motion of your arm because it causes air to rush in the rectum resulting in ballooning effect which will not allow you to grasp the cervix. Gently slide the hand from the upper part of the rectum to the lower part to identify the cervix. Hold the cervix with your thumb on top and the rest of your fingers on the bottom. Thoroughly wipe the vulva area clean with a paper towel. This helps to prevent the interior of the reproductive tract from becoming contaminated and possibly infected. Insert the insemination gun through the vulva at a 40 to 45 degree angle until it touches the roof of the vagina. Level the insemination gun to go through the passageway to the cervix. This procedure avoids the possibility of entering the urethra located on the floor of the vagina. While passing the insemination instrument through the vagina, push the cervix forward with the hand holding the cervix. This will stretch the vagina wall, eliminating the possibility of the insemination gun getting caught in a vaginal fold. At this point, the tip of the gun can be guided to the cervical canal by the fingers of the hand holding the cervix. Once the tip of the insemination gun is in the cervical canal, maintain slight forward pressure on the rod while manipulating the cervix ahead of the gun. While you are passing the AI gun through the cervix, keep your index finger at the end of the cervical canal so you can feel the tip of the gun at the target site. Lift finger and slowly deposit the semen. This maximizes the amount and equal distribution of semen on the uterine body. Make sure you are on the target at all times. Depositing the semen in the cervix or in the uterine horns may result in lower pregnancy rates and sometimes it may cause damage to the uterus. After all the semen is deposited, withdraw the AI gun and your arm. Release the sheath and the straw from the AI gun. Then peel your glove hand over them and dispose the package in a proper trash container. Clean your hands after each insemination. Clean your equipment with a paper towel wet with alcohol. Clean your footwear before leaving the AI area. Regular review with employees about a proper AI technique and protocols to be used is key to ongoing success with repro performance. Equally important is to decide upon the key performance indicators, KPIs, that will be used to benchmark overall reproductive success. Discuss with your reproductive team the most relevant KPIs to your dairy and put a system in place where these KPIs can be readily seen by all. Next, you will hear from several successful progressive dairymen on their approach to AI success. The big thing that we look for and we set goals uh, based on the size of the dairy, uh, number of cows pregnant each month is what we're uh, after. And if you do that on a consistent basis, the other numbers kind of fall in place. Heat detection rates they're getting and, and 
this measurement is primarily due to our first service cows that we're looking at, but it gives us a, a gauge at least to, to uh, look at. In addition, also we're perceptive of uh, the percentage of pregnant cows each week as far as our herd checks. If we have one dairy with a lot of cows open at herd check, it's a real early indicator telling us that maybe uh, heat detection performance is not doing as well. The more heifer calves that are going to be hitting the ground, more heifer calves, you know, of course your replacement herd grows. For the first time ever, we are completely overcrowded at the heifer ranch. The heifer ranch is on a different facility. We're completely overcrowded there. We are expanding at the heifer ranch. So breeding is what drives all of this. So that's why we monitor breeding and pay attention to breeding so much because of its importance with growth and milk production as well, of course. The more replacements you have, the more options you have to get rid of older cows, cows that aren't producing as well, and you just, you know, overall put together a better herd of animals. A technician or an outside technician, the critical thing is to make sure it's a team effort. That, uh, you know, good conception starts long before the technician breeds the cow. Uh, the good conception starts with your nutrition program, it goes on to your herd health program, so we try to keep everyone involved. Uh, the vets, the, the uh, nutritionists, as well as the technicians. And then we try to you know, do the best we can as far as achieve, achieving the highest level of uh, conception that we can by making it a team effort rather than an individual effort or putting all the onus on one segment of the breeding operation. As you have just heard from these successful progressive dairymen, excellent reproduction performance has a huge impact on management decision making. In addition, improved reproduction performance impacts the bottom line cash flow and profit as well. For example, if we take a 500 cow dairy and lower the days in milk from 220 to 180, the bottom line improves by $160,000 per year. How does this happen? By lowering the days in milk to 180, average production per cow will increase by 0.17 pounds per cow per day. This times 500 cows times 365 days with a milk price of $13 per hundredweight equals $161,300 in additional milk sales alone. On top of that, we have improved feed efficiency as well as internal growth and higher equity value from increased cap inventory. Alta, a different kind of AI company. Recognized as a global leader in the sourcing and development of top quality sires, today that's just part of what it takes to create value for progressive, growth-oriented dairy producers. In fact, on many such dairies, reproductive and other related management challenges overshadows genetic progress considerations which is a logical outcome when pregnancy rates are less than desired. We improve individual dairy herd profitability by delivering trustworthy genetics and high quality reproductive and management services. Success for Alta begins with the creation of a pregnancy and that's why this AI training video is so fundamentally important. Our ability to create value on your dairy through quality genetics must first address the very basics in artificial insemination technique and provide standard operating procedures that result in best practice implementation each and every week. Reproductive performance is a key driver of profitability. It's not something you should leave to chance. That's where Alta comes in.